What is this? I mean, what is this? Excuse me, Tennessee. Excuse me. Oh, look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Look what you just made me do. Look what you just made me do. Hello, everybody. This is a cooking video, not a vlog, but I'm going to do a vlog style just because I'm just more comfortable filming this way and editing vlogs. Also, you guys, it's November, like the middle of November, not even the end of November in Tennessee. And would you look at this? Just look. It is freaking snowing. It's snowing. And I'm not saying like just a little sprinkle. No, full blown. Can you hear it? Full blown snow. It's been snowing for about 30 minutes now and it's already, you can see it. But other than that, life is good. It's just freezing cold and um, whatever. But I got this new sweater from Free People. It's cashmere. I've never had a cashmere sweater in my entire life, but this stuff's really good. And it's kind of like long and comfy, so yeah. What is this? I mean, what is this? Excuse me, Tennessee. Excuse me. Do you know what season it is? It's fall. Anyways. Let's get into the cooking video. Also, I've completely redecorated our house, basically. All the furniture is moved around. And we have a rug. But the tree's not up yet. It's coming. So, as most of you know, I've been teasing you all about my cornbread recipe for about two weeks now. And you're all getting really antsy. And so, today's the day. Today's the day that you get my cornbread recipe. Get excited. I'm excited. You should be excited too. Okay, first things first. What do you need, have to have, this will not work without it, to make this cornbread? A cast iron skillet. And I'm not kidding. You need one. You have to have one. It will not work without it. So, if you don't have one of those, go get one right now. I'll link one in the description. Or you can go to a lot of antique places, have them for nothing or uh, used goods and even Goodwill. So if you live near a Goodwill, I would check that out because it's probably like 50 cents or something. And you need a small size, I'll show you. So this is the size you need right here. Um, I'm not sure how many inches this is. It says four on the back of it. I don't know what that means, but it's small. Like literally my hand is bigger than that and I have very small hands, okay? So very important, cast iron skillet very necessary to make this recipe. So, yeah. Also guys, this is based on my grandmother's recipe, so I really hope that you like it. And if you don't, please keep it to yourself because I'll probably cry if you leave me a negative comment about this recipe that is near and dear to my heart. Let's make some cornbread. Something else is also necessary to make this is pork panko. Now you can make your own pork panko by grinding up pork rinds, or you can just buy the bag online. Um, they have them on Amazon link in the description. So yeah. All right. So you also need a big bowl. This is the one that I'm using. It's from Pioneer Woman. Sold at Walmart. I think this was like $6 or something. I'll link it also. Okay. Everything's going to be linked in the description. I'm going to stop saying that because it's annoying. So this, um, measuring spoons, obviously. We're going to start out by putting the pork panko. I really feel like this would do better if I was far away. Hold up. Okay, so now you guys should be able to see kind of everything that I'm doing. So your first ingredients are gonna be your dry ingredients. You're gonna do four tablespoons of pork panko. Then you're gonna do four teaspoons of coconut flour. Two teaspoons of baking powder. two tablespoons of almond flour, and in a smaller bowl, you're going to put two eggs and you're going to want them at room temperature. So now you're going to need uh, another bowl to warm up your butter and cream cheese. So you're going to need two ounces of cream cheese softened and two ounces of butter softened. To make sure that I get the right amount of ingredients, I use a scale. 
You can get these at Walmart, Target, Amazon. You can get them anywhere. This is a cheap one that I got at Walmart like years and years and years ago. All right, so your softened butter and your softened cream cheese are gonna get mixed together. You're gonna want it to look like this. So it's basically just beautiful buttery cream. I could just eat this by itself and be completely happy. It's still snowing, by the way. All right, now you're gonna mix your eggs with this, with your fat mixture. So just go ahead and pour that in your egg bowl. Also, you wanna make sure that all your dry ingredients, you're gonna sift them with a whisk, just to make sure that everything's good and blended. So when you mix the liquid ingredients with the dry ingredients, they don't get all like junky. All right, now mix all your liquid ingredients together. Okay, once you get that mixed up, then put this in the dry ingredients and mix that up. Okay, so the second most important thing besides having a cast iron skillet is greasing it properly with bacon grease. Yes, you heard me right, bacon grease and only bacon grease. Don't be using butter, don't be using lard, beef tallow, duck tallow, no. Bacon grease, it's very important. It makes it amazing. Trust, trust Nisha, okay? So we're gonna grease her on up, all right? I use a spoon to do my greasing. It's what my grandmother used, it works really well. You can use anything, you can use your fingers, but uh, that's how I do it, so. Yeah, watch. You wanna grease up around the edges as well. Don't be afraid to use a lot of bacon grease. You want your batter to literally be floating in bacon grease. Hear me? Floating, floating in bacon grease. Okay, can you see? I went all the way up on the sides. Okay, now let's pour it in and I'll show you what I mean by you want it to be floating. Like, I'm not kidding. It's gonna be floating. Okay, can you see? All this up here, that's all bacon grease surrounding it, okay? Literally floating in bacon grease. It's gonna be delicious. All right, your oven should already be heated up to 350 degrees. Now we're gonna pop it in for 25 minutes. Okay guys, this is the finished product. You need to let it sit and cool for a while and then you should be able to take it out, plate it, and enjoy. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, recipe. If you did, please leave me a comment and let me know if you make it and share with me on Facebook, tag me on Instagram, all that good stuff. I'll leave my links and links to everything that I used in the description. So thanks again, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Love you, mean it. We watch new things with the light.